Hi everyone. Today I wanted to start a video series on building APIs with Rails. One of the lesser known features of Rails is that you can build applications without the view layer. So they're just designed for backend APIs. And I've actually done this quite a, quite a few times. Uh, I've been a Rails developer professionally for a number of years and I've worked for I think the last three companies in a row and we've all had Rails applications that, that are just backends and so they they serve front-end applications uh, or mobile applications uh, or, or in fact other other backend systems if you have a, a microservice architecture. So for this example, I wanted to build an Amazon competitor. I'm going to call it Nile.com after the longest river in the world. And it's going to be a bookstore. So I'm going to start by creating the application and then creating some endpoints to for consumers of the API to uh, interact with the bookstore. So I'll start with basic things like listing the books that we have in stock, um, yeah, uh, updating the books we have in stock, um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see see where we go essentially. Um, so to start with, if you want to read more about what Rails API. Uh, includes you can come over to this page uh, guides ruby on rails .org, uh, api app um, and the guide explains what's included and what isn't but essentially it's a very high level um, when you do uh, rails api new with dash dash api you get all the things you need from rails like the uh, active record, the controllers, uh, routing, but you don't get um, the view logic where the idea is you're not going to be creating um, HTML views, you're just going to be creating uh, APIs, perhaps a JSON API or an XML API. So let me start by creating a new application. So Rails new and then the name of the application which will be Nile and dash dash API. So you can see, even though this is an API application, there's still a huge amount that Rails is creating. We've even got some, some views just for Action Mailer. We've got um, JavaScript for doing WebSockets, um, controllers, models, um, yeah, lots, of, lots and lots of stuff. And what I'm going to do now is open, oh sorry, I'm going to CD into the application and open it in the in my editor, in VS Code. Um, of course you can use any editor you like. So I've got the application open uh, in my editor and so the first thing the first thing i said i was going to do was create a new route for listing books so it will just be a single route um, the application domain forward slash books and that will list all of the books that the store has so the way we list routes is bin rails routes and we can see here there's some uh, existing routes for stuff that Rails rail ships with out of the box. So Action Mailer and, um, sorry, Action Mailbox um, and Active Storage. I'm not going to go into these at the moment. Um, so, so for right now, we can just ignore them. But what I'm going to do is open the routes.rb file. And here's where we can add 
custom routes. So this will be the first step in adding a new endpoint for listing books. Now there's a few ways that we can add routes. One of them is to do kind of a, a hard-coded explicit route. So it'll be something like get books and we can map that to a controller uh, and an endpoint. Um, but there's a nicer way to do that. We can we can do resources books. And what that will do is generate all of this all of the seven restful resources. So I can show you that now. So you can see we have um, forward slash books, which is the one we're after. This, this is listing all of the books in our system. We have post, which would be for creating new books. We have get, which would be for uh, fetching an individual book. We have patch and put, which are for updating the details of a specific book. And then we have delete, which allows you to delete a specific book. But right now we only want the index. Um, and it's nice if we don't have these sort of dangling roots which don't actually do anything. So what I'm going to do is pare it down to only uh, index. If I run the roots again, now we just get forward slash books. So now uh, I'm going to hit this endpoint and show you that the router is working. So I'm going to do bin rails server. This is how we start the development server. I can actually hit the, oh, and just to, to show you that that's running by default, Rails applications run on port 3000. So if I hit localhost port 3000 in the browser, I get uh, the Rails welcome page, which shows that we're we're actually hitting the the Rails server and it is and it is running on port three thousand. Now, because this is a Rails API, it makes more sense to make curl requests to it rather than hitting it in the browser. Um, with curl, we can do so. Curl is a command line tool that allows you to access um, endpoints essentially so I can make uh, get requests post requests delete requests very easily just from the command line so first of all let's just test um, a random resource on the on our application so I'll do HTTP localhost slash 3000 and I'm just going to hit an endpoint called blah, which doesn't doesn't exist. So we get a routing error, no route matches. Now I'm going to do it for books, which is the resource that we added here. So we get an error, but you can see we get uninitialized constant books controller. What that means is the route is working. So Rails is trying to route that request to a controller called books controller and then a controller action index. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to get the entire request cycle working. So we'll create the controller and action for this uh, and have it return a response and uh, we should be able to test that with curl. Uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to, to seeing you in the next video.